and welcome to our Pride service here in the parish of Bradshot Lee and Hale. Now today is a day when many of us from the area would have been going to Woking to join in with Surrey Pride. But of course COVID-19 has got in the way of that, although you will find Surrey Pride online. But we wanted to hold our own online celebration as well, celebrating the wonder of each individual life, how loved each individual is, loved by God, absolutely, entirely, as we are. Now, of course, that traditionally is not how the church has been in relation to LGBTI plus people. The church has time and again set out to condemn, to harm, to control, to deny. The church has taught prejudice, condemnation, and has spread that teaching across the world, making church, and indeed many countries, an unsafe place for many to live as their true selves. It, the church has turned people away from God. And we should repent and make amends. And I am sorry, sorry for every time that someone has said to you that you are not worthy, that you are not beautiful as you are, that you are not absolutely beloved, that you are not to be celebrated, for you are, you are beloved and beautiful and worthy in your sexuality, in your gender, it's your very self. We need to spread that message as individuals and as a church. And today I'd like to begin with a hymn written by Ash Brockwell, which reminds us that God is the source of love and that sharing that love begins with us. So welcome. Sweet. 
I'm Sarah Gillingham. I'm a Christian who was born with intersex traits, also known as variations in sex characteristics. And we're in Pride Month, which all started a long time ago, two years after I was born in 1969, following the police raid of the Stonewall Inn in Greenwich Village in New York. And to think it's only two years ago that we saw our first intersex Pride group which I helped organise with two friends, uh, Pride in London. My faith journey has also been a long one, having originally been baptised a Methodist, and I used to go to a chapel in Chelmsford in Essex many years ago. But I found it increasingly difficult to go to church, which was not at all affirming to people from the LGBT plus community. But now... I'm seeing enormous changes. There's a increasing number of inclusive churches and we see changes in bishops and in our senior leaders. And I'll just quote Stephen Cottrell, who gives me hope for the future. Christ's peace means facing up to differences, confronting injustice and repenting of those attitudes and actions that divide and devour the world. So I think it's so important now that we see at a parish level more and more churches showing an unconditional love, being more welcoming to people. And we're reminded of St Paul's words about all bringing different gifts, different ways of working. It's important we open our doors to these new gifts so other, we can all flourish as one body. I also want to... From my own perspective, having variations, I just want to quote one of the Psalms, which sometimes has been words of comfort, but also can bring a smile. So Psalm 139. You it was who fashioned my inward parts. You know me through and through. My body was no mystery to you. When I was formed in secret, woven in the depths of the earth. So this is, it's so true. It brings us back to how God created us all in his own image, in all our diversity and in all our rainbow colours. So I really welcome celebrating Pride Month and welcoming people into our churches to share their gifts. And I'd like now just to finish with a prayer. Radically inclusive God, who loves all that they have made, let us find peace, love and hope. Let us be drawn closer into relationship with the Trinity. Let us feel the closeness with the one who creates us, who sustains us and who redeems us. Who is forever by our side in both our joys and in our sorrows. Let us celebrate and rejoice our diversity. Amen. This piece I'm about to share has been pressing on my heart lately, and everywhere I turn, there are these little nudges from the universe reminding me and making me feel like I have to write this or say this. I say this for the little boy I was, the teenager and the man I've become but more importantly for those young men and women who, like me, didn't don't have any positive role models growing up that they can associate with. As a young boy, I knew I was different. I could feel it. I knew the word gay was associated with something very bad, so bad that you might die from it. So I had this fear. And then there were these sleazy men who lived a lie and wanted to exploit me. And needless to say, they wronged me and abused me just to a few days later ignore me in the stationery shop with the wife and children, to leave me feeling shamed and confused. But years on, I am completely free from that. So this is not what I want to talk about. If anything, it's just a part of the bigger picture. You see the night a group of thugs and motorcycles circled around me and beat me with 
wine bottles over my head after a very successful fashion show. I was dabbling in fashion design for a few years in my early 20s. It caused so much fear in my heart. I was covered in blood. I kept hearing faggot whilst looking down at one of my white designs getting stained with my own blood before the next beating against my head would take place. This lovely South African couple came driving past and shouted for me to jump in their pickup. She kept holding my trembling body and spoke to me like my mother would. I was so struck by this, having grown up in a segregated country. This was only a few years after apartheid was abolished. We were followed by these thugs and had to actually park in front of the police station for them to drive past. Much later, when I had to identify one of these men, I lied and said that I didn't recognise any of them out of fear of being beaten up again. You see, as a man in his 40s up until recently, I've still been told that I should not be sat at the same table and share the same food because of my sexuality by some people and by others that I'm possessed by an evil spirit. And as ludicrous as this might sound in this, unfortunately, the reality that so many other people face daily, and it breaks my heart because there's nothing worse than going through life thinking you don't matter and that your life has no value merely because of your sexuality, etc. I am one of the lucky ones because for me, I know that I matter. So when people comment and say my work is too homoerotic, I can't help but smile and think, but it's okay for years on end to objectify women and have them half nude in almost every piece of media. Would that be the comment if I posted more nude women? And I don't create my work on that premise. For me, it's about storytelling, about the light, the art, the creation. I digress. I submitted some of these photos to Vogue recently. It's self-portraits of myself and a lovely guy called Dan. A guy I dated briefly a few years back. He used to call it our Disney period as it was very brief but joyous for the most part. He came into my life at just the right time. It was some time after I had broken up with a man I was with for many years and thought I would share the rest of my life with. This photo showcases to me joy and happiness and laughter during a very trying time in my life. Usually I don't share intimate photos like this, but during this isolation period, so many wonderful things are coming to the surface of my heart lately that I feel like sharing. Maybe my story doesn't flow as one in the way that I want to share it, but I want that young boy or girl to know somewhere in the world or anyone else is that you matter. Your life matters. You deserve to be heard and seen, no matter your sexuality, race, gender, etc. I am thankful for all those challenging times I went through, as I remain strong despite all those negative voices. And everything takes you to where you need to be. My sexuality doesn't define me, it's just a part of me. And real, unconditional love breaks through any prejudice. My hope is that with each passing day, my heart will be more open and more filled with love, and that less and less people will suffer injustice just for authentically being themselves. What kind of life would your life be if you couldn't just be you? Thank you. I've been thinking recently about how lockdown and our new online world might have affected Jesus's ministry had it occurred during that time. Now, obviously, there were an awful lot of changes that would have needed to happen first before they found the Internet. But would that ever change the way that Jesus expressed his message and to whom he talked? And the answer, of course, is no. Jesus went out of his way to speak to synagogues right across Judea. And he, he his ministry is characterised by the fact that one minute he's talking to people like Nicodemus, to Pharisees and Sadducees and leaders of the law, uh, the religious law, and at other times he's dealing with uh, the insignificant, those who'd normally be overlooked. Jesus went out of his way to model all meaning all. And one of the things I think that this new online world has meant for us is that we can find a way of reaching out and interacting with people we wouldn't naturally have come into contact with. Dare I say, I think many of us have learned to worship or become comfortable in worshipping in our own little bubbles. 
It's something that the Reverend Charlotte Bannister Parker talked about on the Sunday programme on Radio 4 a couple of weeks ago when she was asked how Zoom had impacted churches in our diocese here in Oxford. And she explained that actually many churches were now only being able to put on one service a day and therefore they'd had to find a way of trying to serve all the people in their church community, not just from a different uh, tradition. And that got me thinking, because so often when we uh, do things with our church, we model the beautiful and the able and the people who, I don't know, look so professional in front of a camera. But that's not what Jesus would have done. I think he'd have gone out of his way to include everyone. And so one of the little projects I did a couple of weeks ago was I invited anybody who was in my social media feed to submit recordings of them speaking John 3.16, the wonderful verse where Jesus talks about the fact that God has sent him, uh, that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. And I wanted to model that everyone truly means everyone. And that includes you, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, whatever state your life is in, it is everyone. No caveats, no exception clauses, just all. Have a look at this. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son. For God so loved the world that she gave her only son. So that everyone, so that everyone everywhere who believes in him may not perish may not perish but may have eternal life indeed god did not send the son into the world to condemn the world but in order that the world might be saved through him Hi, I'm Dr. Ash Brockwell. I'm trans masculine gender flux and my pronouns are he, him. I'm a teacher, an artivist and a song worker. And what I'm going to share with you is really a song, uh, but I'm going to present it as a poem. And I was inspired to write it immediately after an inclusive church faith leaders gathering in London. It's called You Are Treasured. There was a teacher who healed the lepers touching the people no one else would touch. There was a teacher who fed the hungry, showing a tenderness that meant so much. There was a teacher who ate with outcasts, seeking the people who did not belong. There was a teacher who taught the nations new ways to love, for love is never wrong. And what they heard was, people at the margins, you are treasured, nothing is wrong with your design. People at the edges, you are treasured, Know that I'm yours and you are mine. Know you're always welcome at my table. I will never turn away from you. When you think you're lost, that's when you'll find me. Where there are cracks, my light shines through. There is a healer who lives among us, breaking the shackles of our pain and fear, letting us know that we are not our stories, being the presence that is always here. There is a healer who leads us onwards, challenging us when we're convinced we're right. And when we think we found all the answers, breaking us down until we find the light. And what we hear is, people at the margins, you are treasured. Nothing is wrong with your design. People at the edges, you are treasured. Know that I'm yours and you are mine. Know you're always welcome at my table. I will never turn away from you. When you think you're lost, that's when you'll find me. Where there are cracks, my light shines through. <clears throat> there is a peace that we can't imagine. There is a light beyond the lights we've known. There is a power that still unites us, helps us remember that we're not alone. Soon all our gifts will be interwoven. There is a treasure that they all reveal. There is a peace that we will build together. There is a dream that we are making real. And still we sing it, people at the margins, you are treasured. Nothing is wrong with your design. People at the edges, you are treasured. Know that I'm yours and you are mine. Know you're always welcome at my table. 
I will never turn away from you. When you think you're lost, that's when you'll find me. Where there are cracks, my light shines through. Thank you. Spirit of justice, move in the world's heart, making oases, binding up wounds. In you the lame walk, through you the blind see, with you the deaf talk, all is set free. Spirit of justice, move in our own hearts. Bring us catharsis, set us on fire. Let others needing temper our freedom. Shape all our hoping, colour our dreams. Spirit of justice, we act within you. In your forgiveness, we claim your strength. Join in creations, urge for completeness. Dance liberations, powerful song. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not withhold his own son, but gave him up for all of us, will he not with him also give us everything? Who will bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? It is Jesus Christ, who died, yes, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword. As it is written, For your sake we are being killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. I'd like to share some verses from Psalm 139. O oh Lord, you have searched me and know me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from far away. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. For it was you who formed my inward parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your eyes beheld my unformed substance. In your book were written all the days that were formed for me, when none of them as yet existed. I guess for many of us, the story of owning our identity as LGBTQIA is a painful one. Speaking for myself, the gradual realisation that I'm different, that I'm not like others, opens up doubts about my own self-worth and I feel ashamed of who I am. I want to hide and shut myself inside my closet. And sometimes, recognising I am different and feeling ashamed of being different, I find myself at a precipice overlooking a deep, dark valley of self-hatred. And I despair. Why am I the way I am? And into this dark, place shines something of the warmth and the sunshine of God. 
Not the condemning, excluding, terrorising, false God who, while not existing, seems to animate the outlook of many people, Christians and non-Christians alike. No, the God who engulfs me, you, us, with his creative love. The God the psalmist speaks of in Psalm 139. Now, I believe that based on these verses, many other Bible passages and supremely, of course, Jesus Christ, our journey towards self-acceptance and coming out is a journey of discovering how God has made us. That somehow this is all part of his ongoing work of creation, which he's promised to continue until that great last day when we stand before him. We can know his delight in us, his handiwork. We do not need to be afraid anymore and can indeed come out into the full warmth and affirming sunshine of God's love, knowing that he rejoices over us and changes any shame into praise. Let us pray. Loving God, genderless parent, lover and friend, we thank you for your creation and your love for all humanity in all of its glorious diversity. May we, Lord, embrace all, nurturing those who have been condemned and vilified for those, for those they love. Let us celebrate and remember the pioneers, those who stood for freedom, those who lived out Christ's call to uphold the oppressed, to embrace those who have been condemned by society, to encourage them to share the joy of liberated love, lived, celebrated, and limited and free. We thank you, our living and non-binary God, blessed Trinity, creator of the rainbow, giver of the ability to love and be loved, our Lord, our God. Amen. Let us pray. God, the non-binary parent, the trinity of meeting of all genders, the lover and the loved, creator of the glorious, diverse and sparkling tapestry of humanity. We thank you, Lord, for the creation of each unique individual, purposefully created, a divine rainbow of glorious humanity. May we encourage and nurture all, seeing beyond labels, roles and the constrictions of human-made society that have been used to condemn and restrict. And may we see what you are what, and what you see, the joy you experience in each one of us when we are truly ourselves. Help us, Lord, to live as Jesus lived, to love as Jesus loved, seeking justice for the oppressed, challenging prejudice, empowering and calling out those that society ignores, hates or judges setting free the captives, liberating the oppressed, setting us all free to love and be loved freely, genuinely, free of what the world has opposed and so often uh, use religion as justification. Lord, may we be united in your love, rejoicing in seeing the face of Jesus in all, the layers of light that make the rainbow and light up the stormy sky. We thank you for being the lover and the beloved, source of love, freedom, redemption. Amen. Hello, my name's Emily. My wife and I felt very lucky to have our daughter Ariella christened at St John's in February earlier this year. It was lovely getting to know Leslie, Sue and the rest of the team and we were made to feel very welcome as part of the inclusive community. One of the hymns we sang at the service was We Have a Dream. As it's based on Martin Luther King's speech about equality, it seemed a good choice for today's Pride service. I hope you enjoy it. We have a dream, this nation will rise and truly live according to Thank you. 
May the road rise up to meet you. May the wind always be on your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face. The rains fall soft upon your fields. And until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of God's hand. Amen.